Well, welcome to this latest podcast with me, Mabon Apquinvor, and Liz Saville Roberts. Today, we'll be discussing the impact of coronavirus on people in work and specifically um, how the Citizens Advice Bureau in Gwynedd has had to deal with various issues around the coronavirus. So we've got uh, George Williams over there in Vriog and Michelle Williams up in Carnarvon. Burada, good morning to both of you. Burada, good morning. Uh, and once again, of course, Liz, um, Liz, you've been in London as the Member of Parliament for Duvar Mirioni over the last couple of days. How have things been in London? If you could give us a brief update, please. It's, it's very interesting travelling up and down because what I've been doing since um, some of us had to go back to Westminster is always driving rather than, than, um, than taking public transport. And I decided that's what I'm certainly going to do until uh, this, until we rise for the, for the summer at the end of this month. And you can see the roads are getting steadily busier. Um, mm. London itself is getting busier. The, the first three weeks were really eerie in the centre of London. But of course, we're still operating what they call a hybrid parliament. So there are a number of people who are, who, number, number, you know, some hundreds of MPs who are not there. Um, my colleague Howell Williams is, is, has remained back here and, and we operate what we call a proxy voting system. So there was quite a lot of votes this week. We had the, the immigration bill, um, which of course is controversial. One of the things that we were pushing on that as a party was that uh, all people from, you know, from abroad, all immigrants who are working in, in, in health and social care should be granted citizenship because we've been praising the work of people in health and social care. And this actually, you've got people who are on the one hand fighting the virus and helping save lives, and the other, on the other hand, they're, they're fighting the immigration system and the hostile environment of the immigration system. So there was a vote on that. There was votes also on the finance bill. And um, I think watching that from outside uh, is quite entertaining because you have this long line of MPs all trying to socially distance and talk to each other at the same time. Of and the, then, of course, I, I'm actually got the, a proxy vote for Claire Hanna of the SDLP in Northern Ireland. So that entails sort of sudden panicky phone calls as to making sure that we actually want to vote the same way. And actually, we do. And then voting on her behalf as well. But uh, please believe me, um, thousands upon thousands, this is thousands of miles in the car over the last uh, five weeks and the, the remaining weeks. I am really looking forward, frankly, to when it will be right to go on the train again because you can actually do something beside just uh, yeah. driving yourself for yeah. Yeah. what is 12 hours a week. Yeah, I wonder how others have felt, um, have the roads sort of filled up over the last few days. I, my impression, at least in, in rural Wales, is that our rural towns aren't as full as, as they might be, thankfully. Um, I was talking to a friend in Llangian, um, who said that Abersoch was still largely empty. Um, so it certainly seems that rural Wales is still largely empty. I wonder what others might have uh, experienced. Please share your comments with us uh, below. Uh, George, you're over there in Vriog. Uh, how have things been in Vriog over the last couple of months? Well, as Liz says, the roads are getting busier here, but uh, ironically, as um, things change and relaxation rules are, are coming in, um, the weather's changed. So the height of the lockdown is beautiful, and now things have, has, have been relaxed slightly. It's tipping down with, with rain. But um, yeah, I've, I've been working from home as citizens. Advice. We, we've still been working. Um, we're all working from home. And um, that is a new way of working. And it's something that um, we're all, all getting used to. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah of course, uh, that's true for a lot of people. And, and Michelle, you're in Carnarvon. Uh, how have you coped in Carnarvon? Has Carnarvon reacted well to this uh, lockdown? Yes, I think it has. Um, I mean, uh, my husband has been shielding, so we've been quite distant and uh, we've been quite lucky that um, we were able to get um, priority shopping slots. So it you know, kept us as safe as possible. Um, but we're lucky that we've got a garden that we can go out to. Um, I've also been balancing homeschooling as well as working full time. So that's been a challenge in itself. Yes. Um, I think, yeah, I think lovely weather and um, yes, it's pouring down with rain now. Mm -hmm. but I think one of the main things, um, I just live off the main road out of Carnarvon and, you know, um, 
immediately after lockdown, the roads were very quiet. Um, and you're steadily seeing now that that five o'clock um, rush hour queue mm -hmm. um, and seeing more caravans, um, camper vans going by. Yeah. Um, so I think now um, people are starting to get anxious um, about how that is going to affect um, getting rid of the virus and whether that's, you know, how things are being dealt with will possibly link link to a second wave yeah yeah well there's a couple of points there you've raised about um caring for children uh, and homeschooling uh, and also <laughs> the concern around uh, people moving back across into north wales for holidays we we might well come to those in a minute with the work that you've done in citizen, citizens advice um, but if we can just have a, a quick understanding of the work that C Citizens Advice does. George, you're with Citizens Advice in the, the south of Gwynedd, um, based in, in the Dolgellau area. Can you just give us a brief outline of the work that Citizens Advice Bureau carries out? Yeah, even though I'm, I'm based in, in Dolgellau, Gwynedd Citizens Advice covers four main sites, Bangor, Carnarvon, Portelli, and in the south, Dolgellau. Um, our, our role is really to give free independent and impartial advice which is obviously confidential mm. on a number of subject areas um it does seem to be mainly but not exclusively debt welfare benefits and now as things are, are moving along with the coronavirus and, and the furlough scheme coming to an end there's issues with employment and and of course redundancies there but um as an organisation, we are uh, hopefully a holistic one-stop shop for any any advice that um, people want. If we can't answer it, as the saying goes, we know a man who can. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and Michelle, um, the the work that you do, you know. You reach all sorts of people. You give advice to everybody that comes to to the door. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and and um, over the last couple of months, have you seen an increase uh, in the number of people coming for a specific cause? Maybe. Yeah. Um, it, it became very quiet to begin with, and then you know gradually things have been building up. People concerned about. Um, returning to work, especially with childcare issues. Um, there's a number of people who rely on grandparents who are likely to fall into the uh, vulnerable category. Um, some childcare settings aren't open and where schools have opened, it's, you know, it, it's limited. Mm. Um, so that there has been great concerns about people losing their jobs, especially in retail where they're expected to return to work now. Um, we've had an increase in the number of people who um, had concerns that their employer weren't taking up the furlough, um, you know, offer um, and where they went, you know, where did they get money from after that? So we have seen an increase in the number of people claiming universal credit as well. But, of, you know, that's not... Um, the amounts that they receive and the universal credit isn't enough really to cover their bills. Um, I think throughout Wales, um, it's estimated that there's about six and a half thousand people that have sought advice that is directly related to the coronavirus. Mm. Um, so, you know, and, and you know, there, there's a lot of different issues. There's a lot of family issues, um, parents who are separated mm. um, and, you know, obviously separate households and being afraid what they can, what they can do or not being allowed to see their children from one parent. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing an increase now definitely in people who are worried about um, their debts. So initially there were protections put in place mm. um, to put things on hold, um, but you know, things like council tax, that doesn't go away. It's only put, being put on hold. So people have started to get their bills now that have been um, Good for a re reset, basically. And, you know, it's a higher amount than they, they used to because 
it's covering the first three, four months that there's been a, a holiday break in payment. Mm-hmm. Um, we're quite lucky in Gwynedd, we've got a, a good working relationship with the council and, you know, we we have regular meetings to make sure that there's good practice and, um, you know, that there is a very good working relationship there. Mm-hmm. Um, but the concern is, you know, how people across Wales, it, you know, it does vary in that working relationship um, mm-hmm. and how that's going to affect people who effectively feel stuck at the moment and don't know where to turn to. Yeah, yeah, because you, you touched there on a couple of things, you know, the, the furlough scheme uh, and people claiming universal credit. I think uh, Liz, I'm writing saying that around over a fifth of the working population in Dover and have been furloughed. Um, and we've seen an increase in, in the claimants um, for universal credit. Is that correct? Am I right? In, in yes, indeed, indeed it is correct. And um, what you um, mentioned, um, Michelle, about yeah, there are some employers who have, they, 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 this is not the, the common course of affairs, but there are some employers who have not taken on advantage of the furlough scheme. And I've, I've been dealing with people who've been, um, who've been laid off very, very early on. And we have seen this uh, incredible increase in number of people who are, who are now claiming um, benefits in the constituency. Uh, this, of course, is a, I mean, some of the, the work that I've been getting as well from people who are, uh, anxious about, you know, with, with our dependence on, on hospitality and tourism, what sort of jobs will people be going back to? I'm also hearing, um, unofficially in some cases, uh, it's been in the papers as well from other cases of, of businesses that are now preparing uh, redundancies among their staff, uh, looking ahead to when the furlough scheme uh, start gearing down in August when the national insurance and pension has to be paid by by businesses and I of course we've heard the, the, the terrible news about Airbus this week um, with over 1,400 um, proposed redundancies there. I think we're going to hear more over the coming weeks about these matters and again for this constituency where we already have very low wages um, this added on top of what is normally actually the best time of year for employment, mm. um, the summer season. I, I can see that we're going to have, um, you know, it's, 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 it's going to be a difficult time for, for many families. Mm. And I, I just, just briefly at this time to take the opportunity to really thank George and everybody at uh, Citizens Advice because we've worked very closely with you in the past. We've been able to refer people to you and you've been able to refer people to us. And I, 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 I think we're going to have a busy time of it, which is, um, which is sad to say. Yes. So, George, you know, Liz mentioned there that you have worked with close, which is good to understand that you're, you're working on the ground with people uh, in, uh, in the area. What sort of cases have you seen in the area? Um, what sort of issues are you dealing with in, in the Dolgache uh, branch? We, the likes like has been mentioned um, pre, uh, already, we have a lot of employment issues and, and mm. you know, generally th- throughout Wales, it's nice we're seeing you know, more than three times higher employment issues than the same period last year. Three and times higher. Three wow. times higher than this is um, throughout Wales. This is um, yeah. not just in, in Gwynedd. Um, we are seeing a lot of personal independent payment appeals and mandatory considerations um, going on probably more so than before and it's the, the usual issues of, of, of debt um, yeah that's that's what we're seeing around uh, Dol- Dolgetho and, oh. and South Marianas. Yeah, yeah. Incidentally you touched on, on personal independent payments there. Um, am I right in saying that a lot of them are refused initially? But then when they go to appeal, that they're turned over. Is that correct? Is that true? That, yes. Yeah. I mean, like I say, we don't have, have, have the figures, but no, 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 no. The, the, the initial claim is turned down. Then it'd be turned down at the, what they call the mandatory consideration stage. And then we have to go through appeal where a lot of them are, are reinstated there. Yeah. And you, you ha- and citizens' advice, you are having to hold the hands of a lot of people who are making those appeals. Oh, absolutely! And of course, 
we must not forget the people who don't come to us who will lose the benefit. Um, so I, there must be an awful lot of people who do fall through through that gap. But uh, unless we're there to help them, help the recipients of the benefit get through the appeal stage, then they will lose that money that's there to help them with their disability. Yeah, yeah. And, and you, you've mentioned that a lot of people are now falling into debt. Mm -hmm. uh, how can those people be helped? What advice can be provided and where can they be directed for advice and assistance? Michelle? I think that the best thing somebody could do is come to us now um, mm -hmm. because um, it, you know when things start to get more back in back to what we hope is normal then I think the floodgates will open at that point and you know it will be a point of capacity um, mm -hmm. and being able to deal with things because deadlines will you know you have deadlines to deal with things um, companies will possibly be more pushy because you know they've lost on all these months of being able to um you know get the bills being paid um so i think i think the main thing is if you are concerned is to come and seek advice as early on as possible mm -hmm. so that it doesn't get to the stage where your options may be more limited mm -hmm. or it becomes an emergency or a crisis we can deal with things much more effectively and less stressful as well if we deal with it early on mm. um so um you know that there's different ways to to contact us um and you know get in touch as soon as possible but also keep in touch with your creditors as well and let them know what your situation is mm. Um, if they are aware, then they're more likely to be able to advise you, put things on hold for you as well. Um, but yeah, the, the main message is, is, you know, don't leave it till last minute, come as early as possible, even if you're not in debt now, but you're worried when things like council tax need to start being paid again, or you're, you've had the holiday break on your mortgage and you're worried about how you're going to be able to afford it, come to us now. Yeah. I think from what Michelle has said about contacting us, as we're all working from home and we have scaled back some of the, our advisors, it does take time to get through on the phone. So the best way of contacting us is through the uh, website and there's a form there and that will be dealt with almost immediately. Okay, so if possible, we'll share that website address Absolutely, in yeah. video and in the comments yeah. below. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's the current furlough scheme, which is paying 80% of someone's wages. And we know that three quarters of, of the people who might be uh, potential to get the, that furlough scheme have picked it up in some form or another. Now, that's coming to an end in, in August. Um, so we're seeing a lot of, of shifting uh, companies going out into consultation now about their future. I don't know if there's a pattern here. You know, Northwood Hygiene in, in Penagroes. Uh, they're looking to to move elsewhere. Um, MS Solutions in Llangollen, they're looking to move elsewhere. Cambrian Printers, they're looking to move. It's not so much that they're clo closing, but they're moving out of rural Wales into more urban areas, which is a concern in itself. But I know you've raised the issue of furlough um, in, in the last few weeks. What, what do you think should be done uh, about the furlough scheme and how to help some of these people? Well, I think we, there, there are certainly um, there are some sectors that, that are so vulnerable to having lost um, critical times of the year. I mean, obviously, this is particularly amongst tourism, because what I've been told by, by tourism businesses is they've effectively lost three fifths of what of, of what would normally be their their um, highly profitable time of year. And when I say highly profitable, that's what keeps those businesses going through the rest of the year. Um, and also many of these businesses the other significance to tourism businesses is that many of them have a, have a high uh, local spend footprint within within the area. These are businesses that will, that will buy the, the, the food that they're using locally. So the, the, the spend is much broader than the visitors themselves within the, bus the businesses that they are very critical to our local economy. So there are a number of us who have been pushing for an extension of the furlough scheme for certain sectors. 
Mm. Um, of course, I imagine there'll be a, a number of sectors will be saying the same thing, but I think we, we, we have what is argued as being the three winter scenario. So you had last winter, they had to survive. You've what's been effectively from a tourism business point of view, another winter up till mm. now, and up till when we, we, when we actually reopen um, in you know, some, some, of, some of the reopening is happening on Monday with the local travel restrictions being lifted. And then we'll see most likely that businesses will be reopening, self-contained accommodation will be reopening uh, over next weekend, if nothing else happens amiss, of course. But in the intervening time, we've had the uh, local lockdown in Leicester, and there were some concerns as to whether this would happen in Innismorn as well. And there's a really specific ask there that the furlough scheme be extended to make sure that people who are particularly in low paid jobs, who may well be holding down a number of different jobs, mm. aren't obliged to step back from work. Um, you know, in, in the case of, we were looking at this with the, with, with the Innes Morn factory, with the Tlangevni uh, Two Sisters factory, of actually you've got an perverse incentive for people desperate for money to carry on doing their other jobs. Mm. You have to make sure that they can actually afford to stay at home for these to be effective. Yeah. And I, I do suspect we, we, we'll see some more of that, but we'll be looking at fine tuning the furlough uh, along at the same time, of course, that the, the, the Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been saying that it will be coming to an end. OK, OK. So there's some cause for concern there looking ahead. Um, Liz did touch on lifting of the lockdown, that it's going to be used further. I, I know that in Citizens Advice, you mentioned both uh, George and Michelle, that you look at debt, benefits, welfare, and these issues primarily. But but um, I believe you might have seen an increase also in concerns around movement of people um, following the easing of lockdown. Is that correct, Michelle? Yeah, yeah. We've had a number of people not sure on the on the restrictions that are in Wales, um, that, you know, it, it hasn't been clear along the way that there's a difference between the rules in England and the rules in Wales. Um, and people have been in contact with us concerned that, um, you know, what, what are the rights surrounding when they see um, some of the holiday homes still open um, and people still visiting their second homes. Um, there's people concerned that, um, you know, now that the restrictions that are being lifted and some areas have been quite protected really from lockdown mm -hmm. because the virus hadn't reached there by the time lockdown started. Um, and especially in rural Wales, um, where, you know, um, the tourism um, is the main source of income. Um, and they have relatively been protected. How is this lifting of restrictions going to affect their community? Mm. Um, so I think that those are the main queries that people have raised. Um, you know, um, how, how is someone who's shielding going to carry on being protected if there's, there's a risk that the virus will come to their area? Mm. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, I'm afraid we're coming to the end of this very interesting conversation. And, you know, as Liz said, thank you so much to the staff at the Citizens Advice for all the help that you, you're providing uh, people in our communities. But before we finish, George, um, I know you have mentioned this, but it's worth repeating it. Uh, if people want assistance, what can you help with and where should they go, please? Initial point of contact would be on our website, which I think you'll give the details at the end, uh, yeah. or by phone, which, as I said before, um, because of our, our staff, um, it is going to take longer to get the phone answered. But we deal with a number of, of things. We have welfare benefits, debt, employment, housing, consumer, education, family. Um, I will say legal but we're not solicitors no. we can point people in the right way and we can help people with some forms um but we, we aren't but i'll make it clear we're not solicitors or, or legally qualified no. that way. and and really anybody can ask anything from to help with the, with the benefit appeal to what time is a library open well it's, it's a vast Absolutely, yes. Yeah, yeah, of advice you can give. Well, yeah. both of you, Diolch and thank you so much um, yeah. 
for, for coming on. And Liz Diolchin with Hector, thank you once again. Diolchin. Diolch.